That didn't take long, didn't last long, did it? A, a group of protesters decided to sort of occupy and sort of demonstrate against the Enbridge pumping station near Hamilton. Yeah, major issue. Now, they seem to be kids uh, with mummy and daddy grants, I like to call them. And at first, it did look quite bad. The cops uh, did that, uh, let's harass the media instead of the criminals thing. And we're downright rude to our reporter and cameraman. I'll take care of it. Why are you guys trying to instill something here? We're not trying to instill okay. something. You've been asked not to do something. It looks to me, and I saw this gentleman shove the one girl. You don't want you to see them push him. What's that? They're holding something in front, in front of the road here. He just started pushing. Okay. You didn't see I'm, them push him back there? No. I'm going to ask well, you gentlemen to leave. Okay. Can I have some identification, please? Yes, an idiot with a moustache and a police uniform and a gun. But uh, then they became cops again, and they did arrest several of these these uh, fools who were illegally occupying the area. It took almost a week. The mayor of the town, obviously an ordinary local guy. T-shirt, baseball cap, he explained, and I quote, they weren't from around here. It was unnerving, disturbing to have strangers camping out across the road from you, where you live, with your children. We're, we're worried, he said, that they might return. Oh, quite so. They, they might. They, I, I suspect they will come back. You see, unlike, say, my kids or yours, they don't have to work minimum wage jobs to pay for university or college or work hard at an apprenticeship. Caledonia is the same. Yes, I know, I know politicians are too frightened to say it, but I can and I will. The reason so many people can illegally occupy Caledonia is that they are living off government handouts and taxpayer largesse. Thing is, the idiots who uh, occupy, mobilize, sit down, stand up, shout, scream, march are always the same types. And it's always the same type, of course. And they're never violent, are they? <laughs> When Iran executes a woman for being a feminist or murders a man for being gay or kidnaps a union leader who has never been seen again, do we see the protests against the Tehran government? Of course we don't. When China executes thousands of political prisoners, are there occupations outside Chinese embassies and consulates? You know there aren't. The same applied with the former Soviet Union. Never a word about their fascism, but endless condemnations of America's democracy. These are old, adult, professional hack Marxist demonstrators and young, privileged, idiot kids who think the left is the place to be noticed and, frankly, get laid. We've seen them at G20, Caledonia, Quebec, anywhere, everywhere they can get on television and make mummy and daddy angry with them, but the money will still come. That the cops took action here, but it took a week, is laudable, but also quite uncommon. They did little to deal with the occupation in Toronto, they still do little to do with the Caledonia gangsters. In Quebec, the mob was allowed to win. Once the thugs have their way, law and order evaporates. It's inevitable. Tamils closed down one of Canada's major highways, and a police force led by a cop indebted to a socialist mayor in Toronto simply allowed them to do so. Islamic fundamentalists seem to be tolerated, while moderate counter-protesters are harassed by the police. Believe me, I've seen it several times now. The standard, do you want me to caution you? Do you want me to caution you? So, underemployed young people whose hobby is causing trouble because they don't need a job. Remember multi-millionaire Gordon Lightfoot's daughter at the occupation in Toronto and the old guy visiting her? Jesus, man. That, that <laughs> the park your brat was occupying is surrounded by stores and restaurants where kids your daughter's age arrive at 5.30 a.m. Believe me, I know this personal level. They arrive at 5.30 to open up. They work all day take home a few hundred dollars a week after they've paid massive taxes. How do you sleep at night? Well, actually, rather well, I should think, um, in lovely beds, as did, you know, so many of the occupiers who went to nice hotels at night because those tents were cold 
an uncomfortable comrade. Well, it's four o'clock in the afternoon, the anchors have been waiting. From Miami to Nassau, she's bound across the waves. Okay, okay, Golden Lightfoot, I surrender. I, I won't say any more. Just, just, uh, sh the occupation was fine. You've won. Just stop bloody singing, please. Who better than Ezra Levant, who went uh, down to have a look at this uh, Line at Nine protest to tell us what happened. You got back alive, which is a good thing. <laughs> well, yeah, most of the ruffians were taken away early that mo early yesterday morning, around 7 a.m., mm. by Hamilton police, who finally acted after about a week. Now, that's about five days too late for my taste, but it's a lot better than what we've seen at Caledonia or, or some of these other protests. I think the media scrutiny was part of it. Also, this is a fairly major industrial facility. Mm. 20 or 30 people work there full time, and, and some peak uh, times there's 100 contractors working. So this was a major industrial site, private property. It's an important pipeline for refineries. So, I mean, this was not just being off in some city park like Occupy Toronto. This was mm. an industrial sabotage action. Uh, so when I got up there, the cops had cleared out most of the rubby dubs and blocked off the roads, but a few of the protesters were still there, and I did speak with about five of them, which gave me a good sense of the kind of people they were. Mm. Also, living very close by uh, ordinary working people who were very upset at this and felt intimidated, and we saw the mayor of, of the area being interviewed, you know, a very apolitical guy, yeah. and he just said, well, yeah, it's unnerving. We don't want them here. Well, literally across the street from the police blockade was a house uh, Donna Van Houten, I think was her name, I interviewed her. She had a homemade sign saying Westover supports Enbridge. Yeah. So that you couldn't be any closer than her. Like yeah. she was across the street standing there with her two kids. And I interviewed them and she said she's been there for 25 years. She calls Enbridge great neighbors, friendly yeah. people. There's never been an environmental incident. I mean, listen, that pipeline was built in 1976 and it's been operating without incident for yeah. 37 years. It's a source of jobs, a source of tax money, and it's it's their neighbors. Mm. and. Uh, as opposed to these professional protesters. Let me give you a couple of names. One of them, David Prichetka. Mm -hmm. Who's he? Well, he's not from Westover. He's not from around there. He was the G20, one of the G20 rioters who was charged with criminal offenses from that big black block anarchist thing. I saw you showed some footage from the Oakland riots. Yeah. Uh, it, we had similar problems in Toronto, of course. Sure. Now, he eventually copped a plea deal and, uh, and got out of those charges, but that's the character of the people who were there. He made a public statement saying, you know, we, we have to break the law to achieve political goals. Well, at what point do we, we, call, you, do we call you a terrorist? Like, well, simply trespassing, I wouldn't call that terrorism. But when you punch someone, when you stab someone, at what point do we say these people are terrorists? He copped a plea, mm -hmm. but he, does he have no record? I'm, Were there I, no conditions applied? You know what, I, I'm not familiar enough right. with, with the, the terms on it. I just, you know, I typed in that name, David yeah. Chitka. That sounds but, uh, what I have such a problem with is that the police are quite quick to yeah. use even the pedantries of the law mm -hmm. uh, to stop people and arrest people when they want to. Yeah. But in this case, and, and I don't yeah. think there would well, have been an arrest unless there had been media exposure. It, it took a week for them to, actually, to, to stop people who had no claim to, to any yeah. legality. They were there illegally. Well, you know what? I, I interviewed a spokesman from Anbridge, and I said, well, what was it like? Uh, he said that Anbridge was actually negotiating with the people inside. I said, negotiating? Like, what? He said, you're not going to believe this, Michael. He said that the protesters, there was about 20 of them in there, blockaded themselves in, a, in an Anbridge facility. They wanted Enbridge to come in and clean the toilets, and Enbridge did. They wanted gasoline for a generator so they could charge their laptops and, and cell phones, and Enbridge gave it to them. Now, I'm not blaming Enbridge. When you are a company living in the rule of law in a dem democratic law and order country like Canada, it's not your job to be the private sector police. It's the police's job to be the police. So I, I'm not mad at Enbridge for giving these Hostage takers, really. There were no people that were held hostage, but the, they were the trespassers, they were right. occupiers. Like, it's, I mean, it's embarrassing, it's, it's laughable that the, the protesters were negotiating. Can you come in and clean our toilets? I know Hamilton cops. I mean, my son was a McMaster for six years. I worked in Burlington for 13 years. I, I have in-laws living here. I, I know Hamilton. I know the yeah. cops. They have a reputation. They're, they're, they're not generally so sensitive. This would have been a political director from up top. There is no way that a, that a beat cop, a, a, a street-level operations-type cop, would have made those decisions. That would be at a higher level, maybe even the chief. And you know what I think makes the difference? Mm. Aboriginals. Here's what I mean. There were people who called themselves Mohawk warriors, and I don't even know what that definition means. Can you just put on camouflage mm. and a handkerchief and say you're a Mohawk warrior? Maybe. 
who were there. Uh-oh, are we going to have another Dudley George incident, a nipper wash, a, an Oka? And so I think police get panicky, maybe not the street-level cops, but the brass do. Mm -hmm. And yesterday when I went up there, there was about four or five Aboriginal folks there. Uh, who were not arrested, because I guess they didn't get up in time to get to the protest when the cops got there at 7. So I interviewed them, and I said, well, where are you from? You're around here? One said, no, I, I came in from two hours away. Oh, so this isn't even your turf. Well, I said to him, what's your beef? Well, there was a spill in some place, Kalamoo. Oh, you mean Kalamazoo, Michigan, hundreds of miles away? There's a different pipeline. Oh, well, I don't like any pipelines. Well, sir, this pipeline has been here since 1976. Why are you suddenly here? Well, I know the answer to these questions, Michael. I just wanted to hear him say these things to me. The answer is, this is a paid professional protest. Uh, I'm going to tell you where the money comes from. Mm. Uh, Occupy Wall Street and Idle No More did not have corporate sponsors. Like That would sound ridiculous. But this protest has a corporate sponsor. Uh, this protest is called Swamp Line 9. Line 9 is the name of the pipeline. It has a corporate logo on it. A corporation called Environmental Defense, registered corporation, Canadian company, has its corporate logo on it. It's a marketing project by Environmental Defense. Environmental Defense is a registered lobby group in Canada. It's also a registered charity. You and I, through the tax system, subsidize Environmental Defense, a registered charity, that is the official corporate sponsor of this trespass action. Now, I mentioned David Prochitka. I mentioned some of the folks from the Six Nations, uh, you know, Mohawk warrior, you know, professional troublemakers. There was also a young lady named uh, Alicia Pantone. Or Pantone I'm sorry, I, I want to get her last name just right. She, w she is with the Sierra Club, mm -hmm. which is a, also a registered foundation, registered charity. They have a Sierra Club Youth Foundation. She's on their board. I, I went to their website yesterday. There she is, uh, Alicia. She was at this also. <coughs> so you have two registered Canadian charities, the Sierra Club and Environmental Defense, who this is part of their marketing plan. Environmental, I'll call it civil dis disobedience because I don't think there was any violence other than to property. This is what's happening. These people lose elections. They lose votes in Parliament. They lose their court cases at the National Energy Board. So they've been rejected politically, legally, in the court of public opinion and the court of law, so they are result, resorting to a form of civil disobedience that may one day turn violent. <sighs> we better remain on the air. We better remain on the air. Thank you very much indeed. Nice to see you.